after absorbing some of those kicks on these tie pads from you, I asked Joe to teach me how to throw that proper round kick that you see so commonly in MMA and one of the most effective functional kicks out there. So I was hoping you could walk me through both the switch kick and the regular kick so everybody can see how it's done to generate that much power. Yeah, this is a staple in martial arts and it's as important as a, a jab is in boxing. The round kick is one of the most important techniques. And it's not just a technique with power, it's, it's a timing technique and it's a technique of coordination. And it's a technique that requires your whole body to really move as one unit. And it's one of the reasons why kettlebell training and functional strength training benefits this technique so much. So when you start off, you're gonna put a little bit of dip into your step. You don't wanna be completely locked up. You wanna have a dip. And then as you go to throw the technique, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna move this front foot. He's gonna pivot his front foot so that it opens up his hips. And then as he throws the kick, He's gonna throw his whole body across and contact with the shin, so the knee comes up. And what, what is the hand position do you like? Do you like covering like this? Is that the, is that the you, way you like There's to a it? bunch of different ways to do it. A lot of the Dutch guys, they actually prefer to keep the hand up and throw it like this, even with mm -hmm. the hand up. The Thai guys, they, they tend to throw the arm down and whip into it. Honestly, for defensive purposes, the best way to do it is to keep your keep hands up high. Up. That's yeah. the best way to do it defensively. But. I never do it that way, I always <laughs> drop my hand. Just in full disclosure, a lot of people drop their hand. It's, uh, some folks think that you can drop your hand and keep your chin tucked behind your shoulder as you throw the kick. Kind of like a shoulder roll. Depending. Yeah, you might not get as much torque into it if you keep, up, keep your hands up high, but if you're gonna start from scratch, I would say keep your hands up high is the best way to learn the technique. So, your front leg's gonna pivot a bit, you're gonna, yep, and your body's gonna come across. Yep and make contact with the shin. That's it, but you're, you're hitting it and bouncing off. Right. You wanna hit it, you wanna drive through. The whole idea is that if you miss this technique, you're gonna go completely through. Yeah. You don't wanna hit it and bounce off of it. I'm glad I didn't have a hitch on my foot. <laughs> that was so all the way through. That's it, beautiful. Again, that's it, all the way through. That's it. Throw that hip into it. There we go, nice. Nice. Those are good. Thanks. There you go. Dig into it. Beautiful timing. That's it. And this is all numbers. The more times you do this, the more you get your timing down, the more you get the coordination down, and the more windmills, kettlebell squats, uh, cleans, power cleans, swings, anything you do that engages the core and the legs together, the more power you're going to get in this technique. Timing, technique, and strength. I think that was an important tip to really drive through. Yes. There's a difference between me bouncing off that mm -hmm. first one yes. and really thinking about going all the way through. Yeah, you gotta Definitely cut helped. through it. Like a samurai sword through a bamboo stalk. You just gotta <laughs> cut through that thing. If you watch really good TIE fighters, when they miss, they, ah, they miss, they spin yeah. completely around. Their whole body is into that technique. Awesome. Well, thank you, Joe, for the tips. Appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed it.